it gave us a countdown, but eh, we're Good on. evening, America. Uh, All right. Uh, Number 14, I believe. Yes. <clears throat> you have good counting skills. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Are you in your okay. shop? Are you in your shop, Eve, or are you uh, elsewhere, not in the house? No, I just got home. Oh, okay, cool. Ah, cool. 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 Well, what's uh, what's new for everybody? What has everybody got going on in the shop? Dave, you know you haven't had anything going on in the shop forever. You, we need to, you need to. Yeah. Get <clears throat> well, I did. Uh, it's because it's a disaster area. <laughs> uh, I did uh, have the uh, the milling machine up and running on Thursday. And made a set of uh, y-axis uh, end plates on it, and uh, oh, that's right. I think them, I saw your post. Yeah, yeah. Shipped them to a guy in in Salem, Virginia. Um, and if I'm going to do any more, I've got to go and buy some more quarter-inch 6061T6. Um, I used up the balance of my material, so. Ah. Um, and I've also. I've also got to change my code. I'm I'm doing the outside profile with a a one eighth end mill, and uh, I was being conservative because I didn't want to break the damn thing. So I was only running at 11, 11 inch a minute with a thirty thousandths depth of cut. Um, so I'm thinking of of uh, reprogramming it for either a a three sixteenths end mill or a quarter inch end mill, uh, and kicking my uh, my speed up uh, accordingly so that I can uh, reduce the uh, the machine time on them and all. But uh, that's that's pretty much my activity for the week. Yeah. So Marvin's got a steam engine he wants to talk about. Yeah, so I'm going to leave that until later, but I wanted to talk about the, um, yeah, the steam engine and the thought of what I want to do is that I distill water, clean water, and I want to have a water pump, but I want to do a very vintage looking water pump, and I was saying to myself, I saw those water pumps that have, um, that have people have on the farms where they do have like a starter and some big wheels. To, uh, I don't know how to explain the Jetson um, steam engine. So I'm like, what can I do to make a little water pump that looks very effective? And I thought about those steam engines. So I'm thinking of using the steam engine to turn a pulley. That's all I needed to do. Sure. It's doable. Pardon me? It's doable. Yeah, that's all I wanted to do. And I'm like, okay. I need to find a cheap way of using a steam engine to turn a pulley, and that pulley now becomes the pump to pump water into to, for cooling purposes. Yeah. Yeah. On your on your on your still. Yes. Okay. So yeah. basically, what happens is that the still on the condenser of the still it has to cool the um, the the when the, the, the um, alcohol rises, this is in a steam form, so you have to cool it. It's called, called distillation apparatus. Remember those days? So yeah. you have to, to turn it back into water. So you put you run cold water through this kind of condenser. Right. Um, so you're, sure. you're, doing, you're, you're accelerating the cooling coil. Correct. Yeah. So you have this. So it's, I mean, I have a little fish tank pump that can pump up to nine feet high, and it just cycles it, and it's no problem. But sometimes when you're doing all of this kind of old fashioned kind of thing, you want to add a little more, you know, vintage to it while you have this little pump pumping on the side to have some another discussion about it, you know? Totally you, doable. You could, run, you could run the pump, a water pump, into your your kegerator. Inside the kegerator have a five gallon bucket of water. Um, run the water in 
through there and then out through the bottom, and then you'd always have something that was cool. It might not be as cold as doing it from groundwater because groundwater is always 68 degrees or whatever. No, what I do is, no, Andrew, I just throw ice. I have a big, large cooler, like a 60-gallon cooler. I have a water submergible water pump. I just put uh, it in a, a, a bath, cold water bath and pump it through. So it works. But that's yeah. that's that's new fashion. I want to have something where it's a no, mechanical. You want to make this okay. thing steampunk? A steampunk? Yeah. Uh, moonshine. Oh, okay. How? So you have a, go ahead. My question oh, is, how long does the pump need to run? It needs to run for Lord, maybe four hours, three hours. All right. Therein lies the the, the problem. Not only do you have to have, you know, you've got a, a boiler, all right, and a steam engine. Well, that steam engine, of course, is is using steam and water all the time. Mm -hmm. So you have to have you have to have a way to be able to replenish the the water in the boiler uh, at uh, close to the same rate that you're you're using uh, steam, all right, and then. Uh, go to your 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 either centrifugal pump or, or reciproc reciprocating pump uh, to uh, to move your water through your condensing coil, uh, mm -hmm. you know, outside the condensing coil uh, to condense your uh, your uh, alcohol back in from from steam that's coming up from the uh, uh, the pot. Uh, back to uh, to liquid booze. Uh, so you've got to take all those three uh, factors into into play, um, and, uh, and it's all no, do it's it's all doable. It's just how much money you want to throw at it. I have to think about this because I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no, say I throw even four hundred US dollars at it. I have to think about 400 US dollars at something, 500 US dollars to make a pump that I already have. What is the wow effect of it? Am I going to be at the end of the day say, what did I do? I just wasted money on this stupid thing. Or, and go back to the electronic because it's not efficient. <laughs> well, here's, here's, a, here's a question for you, Marvin. And this, this may be part of the, uh, the you thinking about whether or not it's worth doing. Uh, how how much do you stare at this thing while it's doing its business? It, it's like a swimming pool. When you just have a when you just install a swimming pool in the back of your yard, your house, you, you stare at it all the time. Now that you have it for a while, you don't stare at it. The person that comes over says, "Wow, what a pretty swimming pool." So, is it for me? At the end of the day, yes. But at the end of the day, when people come over, they're like, wow, this is all interesting. So it gives some conversation to it. So, right. yes. It's, yeah. So is the conversation worth $1,000 or $500, and will it work? Because, you know, I, I now think what David has said is they'll put a kind of wrench in the wheel by saying, okay, I have to keep on ensuring this steam engine is continually pumping all the time. And I see these small little reservoirs that can't, Whole pump, pump, I would assume that they don't go more than 10, 15 minutes at any given time. Yes. Um, and, it's, right. and, it's, and this thing has to go for three hours continuously. And I can't afford for it to stop and then I have to wait and heat up the water again. And it has to be running all the time. So if you run, run that steam engine dry, you're probably going to have major major mechanical issues. Well, the, the, steam engine, the steam engine is not the problem. The boiler is the the problem yeah, right. if the uh, if the water level in the boiler drops below um, a certain point, you run the risk of of um, melting or burning the uh, the tubes in the boiler um, and yeah. causing damage to the boiler. Um, yeah, well, it, and, it sounds like it sounds like this would be a really cool visual effect. Uh, but there's that monetary piece and the uh, the babysitting and kind of like, it's kind of like buying a really 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 old car, really pretty to look at and it's really fun to tinker with. But when you have to drive it around town, it's gonna break down on you. 
Yeah. I think uh, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go back to my not the electrical pump. I had another option to do just do a uh, a piston pump, uh, a normal piston pump um connected to uh or a pump connected to a uh, uh, alternator. Something I want to make something that people say, Oh, this is different, you know? So I have right. to think rethink about this. So here you go. Here you go, uh, uh Marvin. In the oil fields, have you seen um, huh? have you seen what they call a pump jack in the oil fields? Yes. Um, where it's it's got the big the big arm that moves up mm -hmm. and down, you know, mm -hmm. real slow. And uh, if you go back to to that, it's got either a, a relatively small uh, diesel engine uh, sitting there running away, or a, a relatively small uh, electric motor running away, and then a whole hellacious bunch of of gear reduction to make that that uh, that jackhead move up and down and mm -hmm. and move oil move oil out of the well. Um, you could do something similar to that that would have some wow factor. Um, yeah. You know, uh, you'd you'd have to uh, to uh, build a, a you know several components for it, but. Uh, it's, I've uh, seen people build uh, gravity motors too that run on weights uh, that can run for a crazy amount of hours. Uh, they get oh. kind of big and gangly, but those would be kind of cool too. Oh yeah, like a big grandfather clock. Yeah, yeah kind of works on the same principle. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna find something. Give me a few weeks to think about this. Other than that, I, as you guys know, I extended my. I decided to um, go a little bigger by I bought a. The upgrade for my Shapeoku 2 to 1200. I didn't follow Mr. Um, Eves with his 1800 width, <laughs> and I, I kind of reserved, put myself in reserve, and I spent a thousand feet, a thousand millimeters by a thousand millimeters. And what else did I buy? I bought two bits where you guys told me to do. I did Rocklin or Rockle or whatever that place name is. Rockler. Rockler. Yeah, so they 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 send international. So I bought two of those. Um, what else did I buy this week for my CNC? No, I bought beer. That was different. Uh, that's the only thing I bought. Yeah. All kinds of fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm gonna be stocking up on some Niagara bits here uh, once my uh, these little cell phone stand things I'm doing are uh, I, I get some orders filled for those. Uh, that brings me to an interesting thing. Um, so <clears throat> I saw something on New York CNC a while back, um, and they were talking about doing high-speed machining and different machining strategies. And one of the strategies that I'm using now is a adaptive. Uh, the uh, it's basically a slot clearing. Uh, it's Fusion CNC, they call it. Um, uh, slot clearing or, or 3D adaptive clearing, uh, but basically lots of little it, circles. Yeah. So lots instead of, of circles. yeah, instead of running the bit back and forth and back and forth and going down and running it back and forth and back and forth and down, and it just goes all the way to the bottom of the pocket, and then it makes just little circles until it gets to the end. Yep. High speed. Uh, machine. High speed machining, baby. Yep. And. Yep. Uh, it shaved at least a minute and a half off of the original job that I was doing with these cell phone stands. Um, it was right around 10 minutes, and I've got it down to just under 8. Uh, so it's like 7 minutes and change. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but good stuff. I, I'm, uh, right. I'm, that sold would on, I'm sold on that. So. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's let's keep going here. Um, uh, who, uh, Tony? How about you? What do you got going on? What you got going on? Tony? Well, I just trashed a cap. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, so, I got the um, all the. So what I'm doing is working on engraving billet aluminum uh, fluid caps. For cars, and um, I wanted to get started. I got a, a full shipment of caps from a guy, and I'm planning everything out, and everything looked good. And then 
I realized, of course, after it went bad, that it's like, oh, I rotated this cap 90 degrees so I could fixture it better. But the tool paths were for the opposite direction. So, of course, you know, once you make a bad cut, it's trash. The whole thing is just, it's gone. Well, it's been now, where is, was it to depth? Was it to depth, Tony? The depth was not off? No, no, no. It was, the whole thing was 90 degrees off, so. Okay, it was, it was uh, out 90 degrees, but did it cut to the right depth? Yes, it did. Well, it was only 10 thousandths, but that's. Okay. Uh, any, any reason why you can't resurface that? that cap and take the um, the bad machining off and, and resurface it and then recut it correctly yeah. and salvage the cap. You know, well, the ten thousandths ten thousandths less height than the cap is not gonna be a hill of beans or fifteen well, thousand. Well take a look at that picture I just linked to. Um, let's take a look here. Pachunka, okay. uh, Pachunka, come on. Oh, you ruined the bit, didn't you? No. Okay. No, if I could, uh, in order to resurface that area, I would need to, I would need to digitize the geometry of that handle part sticking out. Uh, yeah, that'd be a hard one. You, you might not, you, but you would have to resurface that pretty damn close, and then you'd have to polish. Uh, yeah. More importantly, well, yeah. And that's and I think it's I think it's actually plated. Dude, mm. you don't want to go down that. Uh, okay. uh, no. How much each? Um, how much are those each? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll if they're less, than, if they're well, less than about ten or fifteen bucks, <laughs> then I wouldn't even bother. I just like, okay, I'll buy them. Well, but what's that dot? I said it, like a dimple right at a like where you started the x y the zero zero on it, it, the other thing is it's, that's an oil drop no 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 on the left hand side right where he starts um there's a little like uh, indentation f deeper than everywhere else where the bit originally started. No, that's not where it started. I see what you're saying. It could be an imperfection in that part. Yeah. It actually started, so if you look at the top, mm -hmm. where the handle attaches to the can, Okay. Mm -hmm. if you go, if you follow that path to the right and down at an angle, that's where it started. Ah, uh, that's the way you're saying now. I can see All right, where that is, too. Ex explain to me how the oil can should be should be oriented in relationship to the to the uh, to the handle. Well, it, that's ninety I, degrees. I, well, um, I was smart and took the photo of the good side. Okay. The bad side is hidden by the projection of the handle part. Ah. Uh, so when it started cutting, instead of so when I machine that, I've got that handle part vertical. Mm hmm Well, when I fixtured it, it was horizontal. Mm. So it started cutting straight towards the handle, and it's like, ah, and I hit the stop button. Mm. <laughs> but, of course, that was much too late. Mm. Oh, that's the, that's the Okay. Puckering. Okay. So, I, so that was, you know, I'm like, well, <laughs> damn it, at least I got to get a picture of the good part. Yeah. Well, on the upside, on the upside, the engravings look very nice. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. kind of what kind of bit are you using with that? Is it like a sixteenth uh, two flute or something? Yeah, exactly. Sixteenth two flute. Um, that was a ten thousandth pass. Are you gonna backfill those with black paint and rub it off? No, that's what my guy's gonna do. So, yeah. so my partner. That'll look nice. Um. Oh, shut up. <laughs> no. Sounds like my house. <laughs> My buddy's um, got uh, he's got a body shop, and he does a lot of customizing, and and so I was like questioning him. I'm like, so what can we do? You know, it's I got this I got this 3D printer, I got the CNC. What can we do? And he's like, well, I got these caps, but the machinist that makes the caps for me charges an arm and a leg for engraving. I'm like, oh, I could do that. So I did a couple of samples. Everything was hunky dory, and then I got this 
I saw the oil cap that had the big handle in the middle. I'm like, oh, that's going to be a problem. How are you fixturing them? Um, what I did was I clamped um, essentially a straight edge on one side, and I pushed the cap towards it so that it was square. And then I just clamped down... Um, well, I think it would be easier just for me to show you. Any chance you could get the model and just make a negative, you know, out of MDF that you could put it in? That would be outstanding. I don't think the guy that does it um, would supply that. Well, it, it's what does the bottom of that oil cap look like? Does it have a funky uh, latch or something? I mean, if, if it's just a round, you know, threaded, you, know, you just get the diameter of that, and well, it down and then clamp it from the backside. Well, yeah, the um, it's actually this is a cover. This is not a cap. So this this is supposed uh, to be siliconed on top of the stock caps. Okay, well, get a stock cap, smash the thing down on top of it. Yeah, just put some uh, rubber cement or something just to give it a little grip. Smash the thing down, put a clamp on the back of it, and you're done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. You gonna show us or are you? Uh, the yeah, yeah. Hang on, hang on. I'll be back. <laughs> you got my hopes up. <laughs> All right, no, but your well. your guy designed these, right? No, he gets them from somebody else. Maybe he would design you the the uh, the mount like a rectangular block with that shape cut out of it. Maybe he would well, design that. Well, that would be that would be nice. I mean, have him make something because a set is five pieces. Yeah, I would ask him to see if he'd do that. If he won't give you the design so you could do it, you know, maybe he would do that for you so that at least you guys could engrave it, and at least that would be just a well, one-time cost. No, exactly. But, you know. Yeah, and the round ones are not a problem. You just mm, uh, yeah measure, measure the OD of them and. Oh yeah, yeah. no, th those are the ones I started with, and I should have started with the oil cap. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't it wouldn't be hard to draw that up in in you know no, AM you could, software. That shape is not rocket science, so. Well, no. I, I I I've scanned it and traced it, and it's not symmetrical. It looks like it's freehanded, actually. Oh really? Mm. How fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, if you brought that on a like on a copier and start with a copier and bring that into Illustrator or something and 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 sketch it out. You might get, you might take a couple iterations, but you could probably get pretty darn close. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I tried to do at first, and then I found that, you know, each lobe is a different size. And wow, yeah. Why would you do it that way? That's so weird. Yeah, probably for you. All right, so let me see here. I'm gonna try to get tricky. See if I can fire up Hangouts on the phone and then go over by the uh, X carve. All right. Well, let's move on. I'll I'll come back. <laughs> All right. So let's. Uh, who else wants to go? How about? Um, uh, I don't know. Somebody go. Eves or uh, um, Tyler. You, you. One of you two. Fight over it. Go. <laughs> Tyler, you there? Great fight. There you go. Two machinists enter. One machinist leaves. <laughs> I don't really have anything new. I. Uh, Still getting the machine put together, putting the homing switches and stuff in. All your screws are 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 in one piece now, though. Yep, everything is. I mean, it's together. I cut a piece of wood with it today, but it's not all square and it's not quite uh, calibrated right. Yeah, that can take some time. Though. But no projects, nothing, nothing. You haven't done any projects on it yet, huh? Uh, well, I did one little school project thing, but it wasn't something I couldn't do with a drill and a Dremel. But <laughs> I suppose though, once once school goes out for Christmas, you'll be uh, you'll be 
busy with doing stuff on that, I would imagine. Oh, definitely. What do you What do you got? What are your plans? You can do like uh, every other other YouTube video, and they machine it. They take a a three D model of a woman, and they they cut that out. Seems like I see that more and more on damn YouTube. <laughs> yeah, it's called something a little more interesting. Yeah, a lot of those are done on uh, multi hundred thousand dollar five axis machines. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess Tyler's gonna do something quadcopter related. Probably. I thought it would be kind of cool to get. Uh, I need basically like eight foot uh, rails for the CNC machine, but then I could do uh, wings for uh, airplane drone. Adapt it for hot foam uh, foam cutting. Yeah. Yeah, that would be because uh, that high density foam is pretty much good to go. Just if you cut it out the shape you need. Else? I've seen some, I've uh, seen a lot of guys uh, on the uh, CNC uh, flying forums that have been talking about uh, their wing molds that they uh, CNC machine and and make a, a negative a negative mold of uh, of the wing and uh, then uh, polish that thing all up and and uh, then lay carbon fiber and fiberglass and and yeah. you know multi stuff in and and uh, vacuum form it and and uh, and make some some outrageously lightweight strong uh, wings for their uh, aeroplanes big you gliders know? usually yeah yeah gliders uh, and, and everything else I thought about doing something like that and then the uh, other thing we were trying to figure out is how we could use uh, all the aluminum that I have and make it a little bit stronger. We were thinking it would be kind of cool to try doing uh, like a metal matrix composite with carbon and or fiberglass or something with the aluminum. Huh. But I was reading somewhere online that you uh, usually have to coat the uh, if you use carbon because it turns into some really super brittle uh, material. The uh, aluminum and the carbon. Oh, when you combine them, right at the yeah, well, like right at the surface uh, of the carbon fiber. If you were making like a composite with the aluminum, it uh, reacts with the carbon a little bit, and creates kind of this little layer of really huh. brittle material. Uh, oh, at the, the aluminum at the, oxide. Yeah, at the at the the con uh, point of contact. Yeah. 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 Huh. yeah. Well, Tyler, we, I, I'm excited for. Uh, I think you're gonna have fun with this when it's done, and you get some time to actually use it. That would be nice. That would be nice. <laughs> How's school going, by the way? Time. Oh, not bad. That's good. Yeah, I'm not failing. That's good. <laughs> Step but, in the right uh, direction. Hope. <laughs> oh, oh, Hopefully and only. Tyler, we have Eve. We have Eve's to thank for that video that I sent you last night. Eves, I sent him the juggling robot video that you sent me last night. Evil. There's a, a robot that basically can juggle five balls, and I was actually thinking about that. And, and when a human juggles, you know, you've got so much motion, like with the hands and stuff and the fingers holding the balls, and this is just paddles that have holes in them, right? So the balls sit there, and it just goes up and down and up and down and up and down. Well, I guess they move in and out, right, to catch them, but wow, it was crazy well, stuff. They they're pretty much on. They look like rails, and then they can just rotate a little bit. Yeah. A lot of balls. Yeah. It was crazy. Up f juggling five balls. It was pretty crazy. Yeah, I watched that for a while. Thanks, Eves. <laughs> Anytime. It, kind of, uh, <laughs> it just kind of was, puts you in a little trance watching it. I, oh, yeah, wow, I, it's I, really old. I could have. Yeah. I. Uh, I could see something like that on, on a wall in a living room or something as, a, as an art piece. If it was quiet, it was rather noisy, so that would be annoying. But Well, yeah, imagine the type of... Well, first off, those are servos. Those are not steppers. And they look like the big boy servers, too. I mean, Yeah. Uh, and I wonder what linear rails they were using. I, you know, there's a lot of questions I had about that. It would be pretty cool to see. Oh, I know exactly. I'll send you a link to the rails that he's using. That was the only thing I was able to find, though. 
Uh, there I was using... thinking of. Oh, go ahead. No, okay. Well, now you've piqued our our interest. You need to uh, to throw a link up on the in the chat so that we can all <laughs> go there and watch it. I just did. Oh, you found it? Yeah, yeah. It's. Oh, it's... that's it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Back in the moment. I, I, my question was, I wonder what the limits are. Are the limits, as far as how many balls it can juggle, based on mechanics or electronics? You know, code, software, uh, you know, the CPU. I think it's probably mechanical more than anything. No, I was going to say it's probably uh, software floating, <laughs> all the floating points, because it has to, because what it's doing is as it tosses the ball up, it's predicting where it's going to land, and it adjusts accordingly. Because if you look at the video I sent you yesterday, it actually loses a ball, and then it automatically dumps another one into the mix, and you see it quickly grab it and then adjust. Because its speed dynamically goes up and then adjusts and goes down, so yeah. it's probably, yeah, it's probably uh, mathematics. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I, was, I was wondering about that. <laughs> you know, with the FPGAs or DSPs, you know, I, it's hard to say. I didn't, know, I didn't see what hardware he was using, but... but uh, you know, it was a Windows box. You go, you go much more than. Well, they could be doing GPU stuff too, you know. Oh, that's true. That's true. Although that's not floating point, though, is it? GPUs are more. Uh, oh, they can do floating there. points. You can, you yeah. I mean, that's how they did the SETI and home stuff for a while. But they're I think... using the the same the same motion that a a human juggler uh, will uh, will use, uh, you know, in that they're they're catching they're catching on the outside. Moving the ball to the inside, throwing it so that the arc uh, goes to the outside for the other hand. But uh, there's no there's no wrist movement there either. They don't have a wrist. There, so. And and there Maybe. isn't in a in a in a human juggler either um, when he's really not much wrist uh, movement. Uh, uh, I think there. there's a lot of subtlety. A lot of I mean I don't know. That's interesting. It's a cool problem. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. It's definitely cool. Yeah. Way beyond me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, David was won't be kind of, one today. It was that kind of stuff that caused the delay in me getting the link to you for the Hangout that you were so politely uh, giving me shit for. Because <laughs> I'm like, okay, let me go to Google Plus and I'll, I'll create the link. Well, I get to Google Plus and, of course, what's the first thing that pops up is all these links of, you know, I'm like, ooh, rabbit hole. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 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 I just can't. I can't get. I can't do anything without. <clears throat> yeah. Getting sidetracked, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Um. What do I got going on? Um. I've got most of the Makita mounts going out. Uh. Though, well. Uh, aside from four that decided they didn't want them after the fact, um, which doesn't surprise me. I've got. Two that are that are that were in the wait list that wanted them, so I've got I'll have probably two or at most three left over, but I'd imagine those won't last terribly long. Um, um, and for whatever reason, since I'm waiting for other things on my X carve, I decided to redo the electronics cabinet, so that's in the works. Um, mostly with din rail stuff, uh, stuff kind of like you know the stuff. So, yeah. Ooh, high tech. No, it's well, I don't know. I don't know about high tech. This stuff's been used for ever for you know, that goes back to relay logic days, right? Uh, uh or uh, lateral logic days. Um but oh, yeah. uh, they were using telcos for a while. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, just yeah. clean and it's it's nice and it doesn't you know I don't know. I like it. And I can get the stuff cheap, so that's the important part. Cheaper. That's the important part. So yeah, so that's uh, mostly just trying to get these uh, these uh, mounts out. These this last batch of mounts came out really, really super nice. I asked him about that. I was over at his shop today, and I asked him about that, and he said, "Yeah, it was an it was a new end mill that he used on this batch. Um, <laughs> sure makes a difference on the surface finish. It's uh, like a mirror coming off of those things." Mm. So, uh, yeah, that's it for me. Um, Eves, you, anybody? Uh, slow week for me. There was a bunch of personal crap that kind of, I shouldn't say got in the way. That's kind of rude. But there was a bunch of other stuff that popped up this week. So I only got uh, 
three things done. I did uh, Marvin's uh, beer totes. Uh, they came out okay, and then I did an audible and made those waves on it yesterday, which that came out pretty. Uh, I got the go to make the. Uh, oh, go ahead. I said I, I saw the I... Uh, the wave thing. And yeah. That, that... Uh, I'm not sure what you said. I made this that? this week. Oh, wait. Repeat that because it broke up. I... No, we're not hearing him. Yeah. Yeah. No. Nope. Yeah, um, you, yeah didn't, uh, your, you didn't uh, kill a nephew, nephew, right? Your nephew survived. Nephew? Oh. Yeah, that little asshole. Um, <laughs> I, no, I have no idea. He thought it was like a toolbox or something. And then oh, he was playing I with it. I totally see that. I of guess. Course. Yeah. Okay, come on. first off, anything in Uncle Eve's office is completely off limits. This is known <laughs> to everybody in the family. Death will be stowed upon them if stuff gets tossed around. They know this. But for some reason, he was dicking around with it, and he tossed it. And the way my staircase to my office is, is it goes down a flight, there's a wall, and then it goes down another flight. So it's like a beam. Oh, dear. So it, it clearly went down the entire... And it didn't fall apart till it went down the second row of steps. So that's kind of <laughs> good in itself. But uh, it completely damaged the entire... Uh, well, it's symmetrical, so I'm just going to say the left-hand side. It broke the handle and the little part there. So the second batch I made, I made the end pieces a lot thicker. <laughs> and that's when I decided to do the uh, wave thing in it because I just felt like I needed a waste machine time in that time. So I went ahead and did that. Yeah. Um, I don't think I don't think I saw a picture of it fully assembled, completed. Did you? But that's because it's not. It's oh, actually okay. the, the, one of the wave pieces are sitting in front of me. The other one's in the house to make sure it fits. Huh. Uh, I'll, I'll take a picture when I go back in the house. Yeah, because uh, you, know, you know what we say, right? Yeah. Uh, actually, it did happen, and you saw pictures of it. So technically, I fulfilled <laughs> that part of the. Uh, yeah, I guess the broken one does classify it. Did happen. Kinda, yeah, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, it it took like four seconds in Aspire to. Well, okay, longer than that. It took a minute in Fusion and like maybe ten seconds in Aspire. <laughs> And just picked fluting, told it the ball mill, and I told it to kind of like start on one end and then slowly, incrementally dive in, uh, 1.2 millimeters, and then dive out. Uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, I was a little nervous at first because you know the tool pathing seemed kind of random, but I, I saw what it was doing. It was doing every third one, and then it would go back and do the second and eighth one, and then it would go back and do the third and ninth one. So it was it was pretty cool. It took about uh, 20 minutes to do both pieces. Um, but yeah, it looks it looks pretty neat. So it it's cool that you could do something like that with no crazy like three D mapping. It was literally a vectored line and then fluting, nothing. Yeah, crazy. that that's pretty awesome. And I would be super interested in uh, learning more about how to do stuff like that. Uh, it's easy. In Fusion, draw a squiggly line, uh, and then once you get done with the squiggly line, you use the mirror or repeat tool, the pattern tool. And right. then you tell it to repeat that pattern across the entire vector, or the entire surface of it. And then what I did is I clicked the exterior of the uh, the model, and then the squiggly lines, and then told it to do a boolean subtract. So basically, it kept everything on the inside, but removed everything on the outside. Hmm. And then I exported that as a DXF, and then dumped it into Aspire. And then it saw the two vectors as two separate lines, because the squiggly lines on the inside didn't technically touch the exterior. Pick yeah, them. I haven't messed with Aspire yet, so... Well, I mean, you don't really need Aspire to do the cam part. I mean, anything that could... where you could tell it the tool type and what you want, that's fine. You could probably do that with Infusion. Um, it yeah, Infusion has a, a path tool that I, I want to... that I've, I've used a couple times to do a chamfer, uh, but uh, actually, I wish I'd get my cam to work. I'll show you I did a chamfer on this thing. Uh, camera, stupid... Use the try that one. That work? Nope. Nice black oh, well. screen. Yeah. It's uh, I, I had an issue and I'd have to close Internet Explorer completely and open it back up, but uh, uh, no big deal. But anyway, I did a chamfer on something. I just selected a path and told it to do a um, do the uh, path cut and uh, did a negative. 
I gave it a negative value so that it would dive in for the hell out of something. That kind of worked out. It, it's neat. I, I'm, I'm, I'm learning more and more about fusion, so it's been, it's been a fun trip, you know? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, every time I get a little idea, that's one of the things is I've kind of gotten the habit of doing is just kind of go into fusion and just draw it up. Just whether I make it or not is irrelevant. It's more, more or less just to get, you know, more familiar with it and. Well, you know, I, I I want Fusion to be the one-stop shop that I know it can be. Um, yeah. You know, and and for me, a simplified workflow is really important. I don't have a lot of time to go back and forth about fifty things. Um, but you know, I also understand that there's a difference between you know uh, an efficient workflow and a fast workflow. So, but I really want Fusion to be that one-stop shop. Uh, I'm kind of trying to make it. But speaking of that, I learned something interesting about Fusion. Oh. Uh, well, I mean, nothing bad. Uh, Fusion is awesome if you have the tools that it's going to make the said thing in-house. But apparently Fusion's not so good if you want to take something to, like, a machinist, per se. Yeah. It, yes, ha yes. Has, it has difficulty exporting it in some fashion that a pro, like, for example... Uh, John's machinist friend Philip. to take that said thing to make said part, right? So I had to, like, crash course myself into uh, SolidWorks this past week to take something I did in Fusion to basically make it in an air quote, I'm doing air quotes, standardized format to dump into SolidWorks to then do the dimensional stuff so the machinist guy knows what the hell I'm asking him to do, which I fortunately John has already done the bulk of that, but I had to get myself up to speed. Yeah, uh, it's it's a nightmare. Yeah, you know, it, 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 what's interesting is that jumping from a non like pro CAD software prior to Fusion and using Fusion, SolidWorks wasn't so bad because a lot of the crap is the same. The thing that I've had difficulty with is the terminology between the two things, right? There was Fusion will call it something else, and SolidWorks will call it something else. But well, that's, that's like it's like going from Photoshop to the GIMP. You know, it's the exact same tool, but they call it two different things. Yeah. Yeah. Different icon. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, and I quickly learned that Fusion and SolidWorks are good at two different things. I, I find that Fusion is awesome for me to take an idea and have, like, not verbal diarrhea, but mental diarrhea. I could take that yeah. idea and dump it into Fusion really fast. Yeah. SolidWorks, not so much. I need to have something dimensionally drawn out on paper and then translate that to the screen. Yep. But once you get it to the screen, then it's like uber powerful. So it's like, uh, it seems like I could use Fusion to do all my, like for example, I have a VFD and I want to make a mount for that. I could import the actual exact model of the VFD and build my mount around that. I could do that in Fusion. In SolidWorks, I would need something dimensionally drawn out to representate the VFD yeah. and then go from that. I can't just dump a model in and then go around it, right? They're kind of complimentary in some ways. I mean, it, it, there's benefit to having both. Oh, yeah, at yeah, least yeah. For right I, now, there isn't. I was going to segue into that because technically I was able to, at the end of the day, take something I did in Fusion and then dump it into SolidWorks and then do the proper dimensional stuff. Uh, I hopefully, knock on fake wood that's sitting in front of me, that Fusion will step up their game and you know, do that, then I don't want to worry about that. But well, if you... It, do, it does look like they are progressing. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, with the weekly updates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Oh, it's, God. It, it's, it's become... Oh, shit. What used to update every week? Was it Java or Flash or one of those? It was like the, the nightmarish, never-ending update. But, yeah. Uh, but it's always something good, though. I mean, like the last... No, not the last one. The two before that, we got the structural stuff where we could stick something in it and actually stress test it in yeah. software. Yeah. So that's awesome. And then they actually changed the uh, sketching a little bit better where I can mirror something and then take that mirror and actually rotate the sketch before once that sketch was placed there, if you move the model, the sketch always hung out and then you move the model, it's over here and the sketch is over here. Now yeah. it realizes that the two things are related to each other. And I know that sounds stupid simple, but yet that was a kind of a pain in the ass in Fusion. They finally that was a that. huge pain, yeah. I, I did see that they're adding uh, this next update, well, they call it the November update, was going to include some drawing mods, or some drawing, uh, some fixes for the drawing stuff, yeah. which is exactly what Eves was talking about. Taking your drawing, creating a, a, 
a, a drawing from a design and basically exporting that as a DWG file or a PWF, but m more importantly, the DWG. Uh, they were making some mods to that. Well, it, it'll remain to be seen. Uh, you know, I've looked at some of what they were saying, and there's a lot that SolidWorks can do. I guess, and this shouldn't surprise me, but there's a lot that if you go into create a drawing in SolidWorks from a part, it's uh, incredibly complete. Uh, every kind of dimensioning tool you can imagine. Yeah. Uh, you know, the ordinate uh, dimensioning, uh, which I wasn't familiar with, but uh, my machinist uses a lot where you basically start at the lower left corner or whatever corner you want. But that's zero, zero, yeah. That's zero, zero, and you go from there. and, and uh, Up and over, up and yep, over, up yep, and over, up and over. It's and super over. easy, and it keeps a really clean drawing, and, and it doesn't look like that's going to be in there. Um, well, you know, they added things like, okay, you can create a, uh, a uh, you can add a 3D version of your uh, object in the drawing as a shaded object. I'm like, okay, that do, that does absolutely nothing for me. <laughs> um, you know, I just increase the features and make the DWG format that you export not broke because that was the big thing with the uh, infusion right now. If you create a drawing from a design and you export it as DWG, there are uh, it's it's basically a broke DWG format. It, it, it even had problems. With Autodesk's um, AutoCAD, well, Auto, AutoCAD probably too, but the Autodesk has this thing called TrueView. Oh yeah, 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 and it had TrueViews had problems reading that DWG file. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's weird. I, I didn't understand any of that. So yeah, which is interesting, like because see, people like NYC and C. You would think that they would notice that, but like I said in the very beginning of this whole of well, my whole rant. He doesn't need it because he has the said machine in house, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So he doesn't have to export anything. And I he didn't find this uh, directly to G code, right? Yeah. So this that was the first time I had to take something I made to give to somebody else to make, and then it's like, well, I mean, I'm looking at it right here; it looks correct. But he uses uh, Mastercam, and Mastercam is like, you know, f this format. I have no idea what the hell this is. That was exactly the problem I was having, and it's and I couldn't believe that the guys at Autodesk had never tried that before, right? Yeah, I mean, it yeah. just seems like. Come on, guys. QA a little but, bit anyway. But the good news is, is that it forced me to learn, relearn SolidWorks. So yeah. that's that's handy. I need to spend more time with SolidWorks, especially if I need to send stuff to Philip. Yeah. Uh, it's it's. Uh, I've I've done quite a few exports as Step or IGS into uh, SolidWorks, and that works either way phenomenally well. I yeah. think actually the IGS file imports a little cleaner than the Step file does, but. Um, Everybody says that I should be using Step as opposed to IGS. I say it's a better format, but well, I know Step kind of keeps everything separate because the one IGS I didn't move from Fusion to um, SolidWorks. There was a lot of uh, individual components, and some were not individual, and some were not, or were rather. And I don't know if they were because they were contacting something else and it exported as one thing. But the Step was individual components that I can go in and drag and move yeah. and. Now, was it an assembly then that you uh, that you exported as an IGS? Uh, Fusion doesn't have such a thing. Uh, it just exports one big model. Uh, SolidWorks, you could do parts and assemblies uh, right. the other way around. But no, Fusion doesn't have that. Uh, well, I, you know that's not true because you can do assemblies, but I don't know what it exports that as. Assemblies really in Fusion seem to just relate to uh, the connection of components. Yeah, you like know. you could put a rotate like around a bolt or yeah. a shaft yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But like yeah, if you wanted right. to, yeah, if you wanted to export that, I have no idea because Fusion has its own file format. It's F three D, F three yeah. V D or something like that. Something like that, yeah. But nothing else can read that. It's, that's a fusion file. So maybe <laughs> if I gave you that raw fusion file to like John or Andrew, he'll be able to do something with it. But I'm sure SolidWorks would just raise an eyebrow. It does, yeah. It doesn't. It, it, it doesn't do anything to it. But step well, and I. The the same thing, the same thing happens if you if you take a SolidWorks part file and try and import it into into Fusion. Fusion will choke on that. No, I know? do it all day, every day. 
<laughs> well, you, oh, have, you, right? have to, yeah. you have to export it from. Well, you actually, yeah, you can. You just yeah. do it through the web interface, right? Yep. Yeah. No, you could do it straight from Fusion because the first yep. thing it asks you is like, okay, I see a bunch of part files. Which is the master thing? Yep, that's and right. It, yep. You point it to the master thing, and then it it figures it out. Yep. That I know for a fact, 100% works because I yeah. do that all the time. So it, it, Fusion will read. Uh, SolidWorks Solid part files then. A and you should sketchers. actually will read a, a bunch of different part for you know a bunch of different formats. Yep. Hmm. Big thing is SketchUp. Yeah. It doesn't do an awesome job, but at least I can see what it is. Because like for example, all the parts I got from Open Builders are all SketchUp. Oh and, really? Yeah. All the, like in the uh, global parts bin folder that I shared with you, that's all SketchUp. Why do they do that? I have no effing idea. But I had to go back in and fix a bunch of stuff. But Oh, my God. Okay. But it works. It works. It does. And, and it it's does. better than me redrawing it all, so I'm not going to complain. But, <laughs> well, you are, but... Uh, well, really, all I want is hole placements, and that's correct. But sometimes the geometries are kind of jacked up. But that's neither here nor there. But basically, the whole point of that whole little statement there is that, you know... I'm a little more versed in SolidWorks, and eh, it wasn't as painful as I thought it was going to be. And I could kind of thank Fusion for that because prior to that, I was using 123D, which is like the baby Tonka toy version of any CAD software. Yeah. So, so actually, that kind of ties in with last week. And and Andrew, I know you weren't here last week. Last week, I kind of asked everybody. Kind of has their package of choice, and I kind of asked everybody to maybe do a little dog and pony show about what they use and why you know how they use it and what they like about it how it works for them um, uh, Eve's kind of tied into that by looking at uh, SolidWorks and uh, not by choice but go ahead well yeah I mean it's, it's just kind of evolved out of out of our need to talk to a real machinist who is like um, this what is know, this garbage well you know he kept telling me are you gonna use a real cat package <laughs> <laughs> oh, what do I tell him? Well, it's Autodesk. Come on. Um, so I know, um, t Tony, I did see you commented earlier in the week like Monday and said, wouldn't it be good if we did this with the same CAD file all the way around? Yeah. And, and yeah, that would be a fantastic idea. So, I mean, if if you want to talk a little bit about what you did, or, or that's fine. But I, I, I would agree that maybe... A little bit more thought into this, uh, where we pass one drawing file around and kind of just, you know, everybody kind of talk about, you know, this is how I approached it in my software that I use, and this is why I like it, and this is why I use it. I think, I think well, that would be beneficial for a the, lot of people. Uh, the other problem that we've got is <clears throat> we have Fusion on Shape, which are both cloud-based, then uh, I've got uh, Libre uh, slash Geomagic, which is uh, computer-based, uh, and Eves uh, has got SolidWorks. I also have SolidWorks. <clears throat> um, then we get into 2D. We've got uh, DraftSite 2D, and um, what's the other one? Uh, I can't think of the name of the other one. So okay. Uh, well, um, no, it's um, blah, blah, blah. why can't I think of the name of it? Solid Edge. Uh, Solid Edge 2D. You can get both Solid Edge 2D and, and Draft Site 2D for free uh, if you want to just draw in, in 2D. So there's, there's so many packages out there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I see where you're going with that. And, and Just... getting to transferring be uh, files between uh, Alibre uh, and SolidWorks uh, are, is a pain in the ass. Um, Even like a DWG file? I'm not talking well, like, you see, know, but, but, um, I'm not um, here, a DWG file that's, well, that's 2.5D. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking more in the way of, of solids. Uh, uh, 3D models, all right, um, and you've got you've got Fusion um, now that does 3D models, um, and they're starting to to work on their collaboration um, formats and everything else. So that that John, if you if you design something in 
infusion that, and I'm part of your group uh, that I can see it and, and, and make changes to it and you see the changes and everything else which is, is good. Same thing with Onshape. Uh, if, uh, if I share a, a, a part model with Tony, um, Tony can, can see my, my part uh, and my assembly and, and everything else and make changes and everything else and I see his changes live in Onshape. Uh, Onshape is, has screwed up the, uh, the free version because they are now limiting it to a hundred megabytes of, of size and you can burn up a hundred megabytes in a uh, uh, CAD sure file yeah. that quick. Yeah. I mean, so, but your idea is, is good, John, of... of let, let me know yeah. if it's loud and obnoxious. What's that? So let me know if, uh, if I'm loud. Oh, you're always loud. That's all right, though. We love you anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what the mute button's for. Um. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 and you actually touched on something else, too, would be, uh, aside from just the comparison of, I, I, I guess where I was going with all this was uh, just as a reference of somebody were watching this, you know, I don't, who knows. I, we don't get a lot of views, but, you know, we get, I've, I think we've had 19 views on one thing once. <clears throat> so that was a lot. That might have just been we're me looking at people viewing it. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Looking at it. That was yeah. all, all five of us looking <laughs> at it. Fourteen, several times, times. three yeah. times. Yeah. <laughs> but I just thought it would be kind of cool, it, you know, if somebody was thinking of, you know, what package to look at. It would be good to hear from people that that kind of have some experience with it to say, you know, why. But what you touched on kind of made me think of, it would be interesting from us as a group. You know, and I know we kind of talked about this before, and maybe it, maybe it's not quite a collaborative project, but maybe it's a maybe it's yeah, I guess a collaborative project where we each kind of do a part of it. And what on earth? What was that? What is? Who is that? Our my, I think it's Marvin. He's, I think it's Marvin. Marvin Furniture. Yeah. Um, All right, Marvin. But uh, a collaborative project where we could, you know, maybe I think we could all take step files, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah. Um, that might be a good format. I don't know. I it just something that would be kind of fun. It would be good experience uh, to be able to do that back and forth. Um, you know, well, it's not something we do right now, but it's something that would I've kind of thought about in the past, and you kind of made me think about it again. I think if if there's a, a project that, that comes up that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight of us uh, want to to um, work on the design of it, then it's best to choose a common CAD program. Oh, and probably, oh, I, and, and the, probably the the best common CAD program right now uh, is is Fusion um, because it's got the ability for everybody to look at the exact same file. Yeah. All right. Uh, whereas it, in other CAD programs, John, if you send me a file you know, via email or whatever, and I look at it, make it a, cha a change to it, then the file I have and the file you have are no longer the same. Yeah, no, I get that. I guess yeah, where I was yeah, going with that yeah. was was if, if I mean, we don't always have the luxury in this world of, of transferring files to people that are using the same software as I have or you have. Um, you know, case in point, my working with Philip, you know, I've learned a lot about what job shops want, you know, how he expects his drawings to look. What you don't even that's that's a whole other can of worms for me because uh, I'm not a professional draftsman and you know engineer, so I, I don't know what they typically want. He's been very kind and given me files that DWG files that are dimensioned the way he likes to get them, but you know, the software I'm using, short of SolidWorks, uh, doesn't quite, you know, Fusion doesn't allow me to do a lot of the things the way he likes them, so I've had to compromise. But 
but to be able to send files to each other, even though we're not using the same software, I think I think is a valuable exercise. I think we can. I I don't know. I mean, I I think it, if nonetheless, I think it'd be kind of fun just to see how it ends up working out. Whether we make the part or not is irrelevant, but it's it'd be kind of see fun to see how. You know, so you know, I do something and I send it to you, Dave, and and what problems do you have trying to import that? What prob are there any problems that we need to be aware of? There's I think valuable lessons to be learned from doing that kind of thing. Well I have some advantage in that I have SolidWorks available to me. Yeah. Uh, on shape av available to me. Uh, Fusion available to me. Uh, all right, so you don't count. You have to pick one and stick with it. You don't count. Yeah, yeah. Quit showing off, Dave. What? Yeah. Quit showing off. Yeah. Well, no, it's not showing off. It's it's just that I've accumulated them over the years. Uh -huh. I know. You know, I've had I've had a Libre. Yeah. Hey, Marvin, I noticed. Marvin, I noticed you mentioned Onshape. What was what was your? Uh, did you have a point of of uh, you texted Onshape? Was there yeah, it was, it's something that I found the other day, and I thought it was very interesting. How um, we we're talking about last week. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm just take off this. Yeah, we we're talking about last week about you know CAM software is going um, to the cloud, and you know, um, and you know like a Tor Mac going to the cloud instead of you know. Computer based, you know, and this is to show you that it's so much everything is going to the cloud, and this is one of them, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah, yeah. Um, I have not tried on shape yet. Uh, I, when I found out about the limit, I was like, uh, the one of the, limit. Uh, one of the things that on shape is doing very well <coughs> is its constraints. So when you take a whole bunch of parts and you want to assemble them into a, an assembly and you want some of them to rotate and uh, some of them not, to not rotate, just be joined to, to other parts and everything else. Um, and if you've got gears in the system and you've got gear ratios in the system, uh, they've got constraints that will let you set up gear ratios. So if you're, if you're doing a motor, or an engine, you can do the uh, the two to one cam thing. Uh, they also have threading constraints. So if you've got a uh, a lead screw, um, you can you can turn the lead screw, and the uh, the ball nut will will travel uh, with it, and uh, the whole nine yards. But like you say, John, they've um, gone and and messed up the uh, the system by limiting. Uh, your um, file that. size to a, to a hundred to a hundred megabytes. And well, I, uh, I don't know. In the going forward, I don't know how much luck they're going to have with that, um, because people will. I, I mean, if you compare, does Fusion do everything yet? No. Are, are they getting there and trying to? Oh, absolutely. They're they're definitely trying to. So I think if they want to compete with Fusion on any sort of level, they're going to have to. Well, I hope they fix. Uh, I hope they fix the complex sketch issue. Uh, if you put anything in there that's complex, it just bogs the hell in back. Who's that oh, on tape? Or fusion? Fusion. Yeah, but fusion. In, in, yeah, my thing with on shape is that you know where it says a hundred uh, ten private. For me, I'll be honest with you. I have nothing to do with machining in terms of everything I make. I share. Everything I make, I share. That's my rule because I'm not selling it. It is not a business for me. So I don't have to have anything private. So for me, it works great because I'm a hobbyist, a true hobbyist uh, in that sense. I'm not trying to make any money from it. So I understand when somebody's trying to make money from it, they're like, okay, I need to keep this close to the chest because I can't share it with the general public. Well, um, the problem with that is like if I have a prototype, that prototype takes up a slot. Right. Yes. <laughs> so that kind of kiboshes that whole ordeal about sharing it or not. If I'm just working on something new, I can't because I ran out of space. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. And some and yeah. sometimes I have a. I mean, if I go to my fusion folder, I mean, oh, I've Jesus got. Jesus Christ! Don't even. <laughs> right. I many, don't even go there. Right. Oh my God. Yeah, uh, I've got so many stuff. So many things. I mean, uh, can't even yeah. see. Doesn't even show you what it is in gigabytes. I don't even think it does. Well, and if I go to my if I go to my uh, Libre files, you know, uh, shoot, I. I lose more crap on my Libre than I can shake a stick at because it gets stuck where I, you know, can't find the damn stuff because there's so <laughs> many file file folders and files and and uh, versions of of uh, uh, stuff and uh, it's it's Ooh, uh, it's flat crazy. Oh, um, sorry, I'm gonna interject real quick. Uh, so I'm I've got the cam running on the other workstation and. Uh, I'm going to show the night and day versus uh, not surfaced versus newly surfaced and nice and flat. So yeah, you something. better change that quick because it's going to make me throw up a little bit. Do what? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what is, what is that? <laughs> yeah, we're getting we're getting motion sickness here. Yeah, I'm getting a little motion sickness here. Yeah. I don't know what's going on there. Present <laughs> that, John. John, present that so that we can see eyes. That'll really. Oh. Out of focus. Ooh. 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 There we go. Ah. Okay, John, you can take it off of present. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm getting better at fusion, that's for sure. I kind of, uh, it, it, you definitely have to use it the more I use it, but I will say that there are, uh, things like, Eves, I don't know if you noticed this, but uh, like when you're using Fusion, uh, you know it it can really be slow sometimes, and I don't experience any of that with SolidWorks. Yeah, like for example, the Super Pew Pew model will bring the death upon any computer that I load that thing on. But there's like hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of parts in that thing. But if I open like the end plates, no problem. I could spin it around and scroll. It's no even problem. even yeah. in even in SolidWorks. Have you tried to bring that into SolidWorks? Um, that's a good no. Actually, I, I should probably do that. That would be awesome. I'd like to see that actually. Uh, do they have any kind of collaborative environment that where we can share stuff other than the, other no. than Dropbox? It's just a file transfer. Yeah, I mean, I it just, supports it supports revisioning because in, during the install, it asks you. But there's a shared folder, so I'm I'm assuming it it does some sort of export on the. Oh, there's the all program. kinds of extra stuff a guy can install, and one of them was some sort of groupware thing. But yeah, but now I mean that and case in point, like for example, when we were working on the VFD mount, and next thing you know, you're looking at my instance of Fusion, you're watching me do changes, and then I can hand the reins to you, and you can pan and make changes, and then hand it back yeah. to me. That's happening real time. You're actually seeing me work on the part, right? Yeah. That's yep. really freaking cool. Yeah, that's uh, really and, cool. Yeah. And then what's nice is like I can work on something, and the next day you open it, and you can see the changes I've done. And actually, what's interesting too, which neither of us have used, you can comment on the revision. Like I, I really don't like this. Can you revert back? And then the next time I log into Fusion, I will see a little like um, explanation I've, point by one of the parts that said that John thinks this sucks. Undo it. I think I have commented on a few things. I don't remember what. I think I come. I don't know. I don't remember. I thought I did, but on the end plates, oh, I haven't seen it. No, I don't know. It was on something. I don't remember what it was. Uh, I don't think I said it sucked, but and and that's that's where the cloud people are are starting to shine. Yeah. You know, uh, and you can bet that um, Onshape is watching Fusion. Oh yeah. Like a hawk, and you can bet that that Fusion. Is watching on shape like a hawk. I mean, they probably each of them have probably got a team of people that is comparing each another's programs. You know, what what's on shape doing that Fusion's not? What's Fusion doing on shape's not? Et cetera, et cetera. I mean, uh, and so it's. Uh, it could be the uh, the future. Well, it would be really cool to see true cloud um, uh, a, a true cloud computing sort of uh, where you have a front end, but all of the heavy lifting is done elsewhere. 
Well, and that's on shape. Yeah. When I'm on shape is a total browser oriented CAD. All right? right. I have no on shape software loaded on my machine. Now, what he's referring to is the actual rendering and computational part. That's happening. Uh, that's still happening in the browser. Um, well, okay, in that respect, yes. So but the interesting thing is, Fusion actually will do the um, the rendering in the cloud. You can do that, but that's about it. You can't really do anything else yeah. beyond that. So right. they th they have the infrastructure, I guess, to do it. I guess I don't know. I mean, we'll oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, and Fusion, uh, if I'm correct, this the the file storage is is cloud based, but when you're working on one of your files, you're working on it computer based. Right. Uh, you know, using the the software on, on the computer, because when I loaded Fusion, I had to you know wait while it downloaded. You know, megabytes of of uh, program data, and and uh, yeah. then went in and installed it, and and everything else. But um, it's my understanding that the the files that I create are, you know, out in the cloud, and that's why, uh, John, you can you can look at my files, and I can look at your files when. When we have given each another permissions, uh, and Eves can look, you know, so you can you can set up, you know, I don't know what what kind of group limits there are, you know, can you can you only it's set up? It's pretty limited, you know, with regards to you know functionality. I mean, I can say share, you know, we've got one folder shared, I think, between a bunch of us uh, CNC enthusiasts uh, folder. Uh, you know, and it's the permissions are pretty basic. It's, it's you know, you can edit or you, I don't know. I don't think that's it. You know, I don't no, think there's like no, a you only or anything yeah. like that, right? You can do it's, view only. Um, can make changes to specific parts. Make changes to all parts. Uh, can import export only. There's there's a bunch of. Uh, uh, so they have they have thought about it to some extent. That's good. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, that that's their, because if we were an actual company and if I'm working on one little widget, you don't want me to manipulate the other widgets, right? You want me to only yeah do my part, and that's one of the yeah. things that I hate and love about Fusion. It's like, let's say if I, I like for example with Super Pew Pew, I completely did the x axes completely separate from the rest of the machine. When I imported the x axes to the main gantry. It linked it to the original that I manipulate, which means that I can't make any changes in the master with all the components. I can only make changes in the small file that I initially made, which is good in a sense that, okay, that means that any minute changes I do to the x-axis model alone were reflected to the bigger model, but then becomes a pain in the ass when I need to export it because then it just constantly complains that, hey, uh, we can't export linked files, so I have to break yeah. the link and then export the file. And then I can recreate the link after the fact. Or what I ended up doing was creating a copy of that file into a separate location, which is in the um, the folder that we and John have shared amongst us. And then that's it. And then I just weekly update that file to that location, which all I'm doing is saying save as over there, right? So yeah, I, I wish there was a slightly better way of doing that, where I can share something that has a bunch of links and not have to worry about it, like complaining that oh well, you can't do that. No it's got to be a hard problem for them to solve. You know, how do they be all things to all people? Like, you know, it's it's just oh yeah, for, yeah, yeah. you know, on shape, same same problem. You know, it's 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 how do you how do you satisfy the masses? You know, no matter what you do, it's never going to be right for everybody. So yeah, that's yeah, true in general. Hey guys, we're, I think we're close to the hour. I'm gonna. Anybody else got anything they want to add before I stop record? I mean, we can continue hanging out. Oh, there's, um, there's the V carve. Ooh, out, of, out of focus. I posted, I posted some stuff in the uh, in the Back. chat. Out, yeah, of out of focus. Out of focus. Hold on. Hold on. I, I, don't have, I don't have any lighting at my freaking desk, and the camera doesn't auto focus. There we go. Just, just there. The that's not bad. Oh, that's, that's not bad. That's nice. An N. I see that. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've I've designed this little cell phone stand, um, and this is just a this is a part that's uh, trash. So this was just a test cut, um, V carve out of uh, F engrave. Um, it's just a font that I found. 
Uh, my mother's first name is Nancy, so um, I Ephraim designed Grave this stand. Pretty well, huh? Yeah, I designed this stand just for her. Um, and what I'm going to do is I just got a an ebony uh, stain. So what I've done is I actually have a finished part. Hold on, finished part. Go. A way to be prepared, man. Come on. Uh, finished part. <laughs> And the, the curtain's there to keep the dust out of my office area, so it's it's not that I'm it's not that I'm chopping up bodies yet. So it, it I, slow it down, it won't keep it out. That's right. Hey, hey Dexter. Yeah, it's, yeah. I've got the I've got the the De Dexter uh, uh, fan mod going on with the plastic everywhere. Anyway, um, so what I've done is I've um, went ahead and put a coat of polyurethane on this one, and this is a uh, uh, an actual finished product. Um, you know, just real basic stand, um, kind of a thing. Anyway, so my mom's got an otter box, so I had to make this one extra big. Um, I'm actually making these. Oh, nice. For fablets. <coughs> yeah, for fablets. It's it's fabulous. <laughs> oh. But cool. anyway, and I, I do some little engraving on the other side. But anyway, and I. Selling them for a couple bucks to make make a little Christmas money. But anyway, long story short, I'm taking this one, which I've coated in polyurethane. It's going to end up looking like that. But with the twist, after I engrave it, I have a, an ebony stain. I'm going, to, I'm going to try to rub the ebony stain in, sand the polyurethane off, and then polyurethane it again, making the engraving pop out. So we'll see how that works. Um, it'll either It'll work. either be... Yeah, it'll either be as awesome as I think it's going to be, or it's going to be shitty. So, <laughs> worst case scenario, I just cut another piece out. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna try an inlay in there too. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But, yeah uh, fake cool ivory thing, inlay. Yeah. The cool thing about what I'm doing is I purchased a piece of um, pine. Um, I don't know if it's decking or whatever. It's it's a uh, uh, it's just a half-inch pine, you know, eight-foot board. board, seven dollars at Lowe's, and it's exactly this wide. So I just cut all of that out on one side and call it a day. Nice. And the board costs seven dollars, and I sell one of these for seven dollars. It it uh, yeah, it's so, what they refer to as one by three. Right. So uh, you what you, you you do you go to um. A farmer's market and give it to somebody for them to sell on your behalf to get uh, more. No, I actually uh, I work at a my my job has like 700 employees, so uh, I just yeah. tell people about it and they're like, oh, I want 10 of those. <laughs> so I literally have a stack of. See if you can see them. You see that, right? That's oh, yeah. a stack of 10 of them. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, but anyway. Uh, and I've also got another product that I'm, I'm, I've been tinkering with, um, which has given, and I've posted a couple of times at the forum, it's a, it's a paddle like a sorority paddle, but the, the thing that it's really helped me learn is how to do a flip cut. So when I have to rotate double the sided. Part, yeah, double-sided cut, so I'm doing uh, technically two, two uh, true 3D carving, so I take the part, you know, and I'll cut out this, this, 2.5D, and then I flip it, and then I cut out the other, I cut out the other 0.5D or whatever. Um, so that it's been really interesting by uh, doing a, a, a round bevel. Here, I'll show you one. Actually, nope, I have it right here. Sorry. Um, but um, so it's got a a round a rounded handle. The the whole surface has a a, a rounded profile. Mm hmm. And for the most part, that came out really, really well in the uh, the, uh, the rotated cut. Um, it, not as well as it could have. There was some. Uh, it was slightly off by uh, less than an eighth, maybe like a sixteenth. Uh, but it's wood, so I just fixed it. Uh, hey, I fixed can, it in post. can I make a suggestion? Number them. Number them. <laughs> yeah. Because what happens, it creates value. Because you say to them, you're number 15 out of, you know, no, number yeah, 18. Serialize them, yeah. Yeah, a number yeah. then serialize it, actually. Yeah, yeah you're, you're one of 
You're one of fifteen, two of fifteen. Right. Yeah. It creates a it creates a, a false uh, a false Sense value. Of you, to it. Right. You need I, that. It takes you two seconds more to add that in there. Well, I, I suggested to... he cover them in fur. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I cover them in leather, we might. And then and we got a whole different market. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> Oh no, that's the market I'm going for. Right? Oh. Uh, when you come back, I have another suggestion. Uh, here's here's one. You'll I'm like. Gonna, I'm going to end this in a sec, guys. So we'll yeah, we'll stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah, it's so it's it's like a branding if you hit it hard enough. Yeah. Oh yeah, the welt. Oh, yeah. The welt <laughs> yeah, will be. Uh, will be. Uh, <laughs> that's why it's backwards, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And also, get a sticker. Find some way of putting your number. The worst thing you can do is sell it to somebody, and a year down the line, somebody looks at it, goes into somebody's house and says, hey, where did you get that? Ah, I don't remember. This well, guy I, uh, I want to do a little engraving somewhere on the handle um, or something. Um, let's, get a, let's go get go to one of those, I guess you guys call them office depots, and just get a little sticker thing and just print your name on it. And just stick it to the back. If it falls off, it falls off. And if the customer wants to take it off, they can take it off. But I you wish I'd have done that with those uh, Makita mounts. Is, is done a you know something on there? Yeah. I didn't yeah. think of it. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna consider myself having having uh, one of the first ones. So yeah. <laughs> actually, actually, you do have the first one. So you, you have oh. one of, of, <laughs> of uh, He actually has the very first one that he gave me. Yeah. yeah Number so, one. So those are the things that you, you when you when you when you start selling these things, you're trying to do things unique, you know. You number them, you do know, put serial numbers on them and Right. Well and, and and one thing that I've noticed about uh, uh s certain markets, certain niche markets, so this would be considered a niche market, right? You don't go to well you don't go to or in strictly business, you don't go to Walmart and buy one of these, right? Um so as it being a niche market Certain items in the niche markets are valued higher over quantity. So mm -hmm. what what I mean by that is the we we talked about this the other week um, with Eves and and, and Marvin. Uh, we had talked about. Do we want to go offline? Yep. I yep. Right, we do. Off. We do. Anybody else get anything they want to add? Tyler, no. Tony, anything? Nothing. All right. 